Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are going back through Ninjago history and uncovering what might be Ninjago's biggest lie and the potential truth that could have changed the series forever. This of course relates to the prophecy of the Green Ninja, a prophecy that was introduced in early Ninjago. The prophecy stated that a legendary warrior would rise above the other ninja and become the Green Ninja, destined to defeat the Dark Lord and eventually save Ninjago. Of course, we know now, 10 years later, that the specific ninja discussed in the prophecy was indeed Lloyd, who ultimately became the Green Ninja and went on to battle the Overlord, defeating him and bringing Ninjago back to the light. The story of the Green Ninja is pretty well known among Ninjago fans, but of course we do know that throughout the Green Ninja's history, there was another contender introduced during flashbacks in Season 5 Possession, that of course being Moro, the Master of Wind. A young Moro was found by Master Wu outside the monastery, and of course, since Garmadon had recently begun training under Master Chen, Wu decided to do a little training of his own and bring Moro in and train him in the way of the ninja. Ultimately realizing that Moro had an elemental power, that of course being wind, Master Wu realized that a young Moro had the potential to become the green ninja. Maybe this was the legendary warrior the prophecy spoke of. Moro began to train under Master Wu, but eventually Moro's darker side showed through. But Master Wu still decided to test Moro anyway, by placing the golden weapons around him, because the golden weapons obviously could sense who the green ninja truly was. But after the golden weapons rejected Moro, it soon became clear that he was not worthy of being the green ninja after all. And history was seemingly set, but what if it wasn't? This is where the big lie comes into play here. There is a very popular fan theory that Master Wu may have deliberately tweaked destiny to have Moro become rejected by the golden weapons, ultimately taking away his potential of being the green ninja. And maybe Moro was indeed destined to be the chosen one this entire time, and because of that, Master Wu purposely changed destiny. What evidence do we have to suggest this? Well, if we take a look at the initial scene where Moro was indeed tested by the golden weapons, it is clear that there is something very off about the golden weapons of Spinjitsu. If you take a look at the Sword of Fire, that is clearly not the Sword of Fire. That is a simple golden katana. Of course, in this scene, the other three golden weapons are indeed present. The Scythe of Quakes, Nunchucks of Lightning, and Shurikens of Ice. But the Sword of Fire is obviously not there. Meaning, of course, Moro would have been rejected. Not all four of the golden weapons were actually present at Moro's test. There is a chance that Moro was indeed worthy, and Master Wu sensed it, and of course changed the circumstances to make it so that Moro would become rejected. But why would Master Wu do such a thing? If he realized who the Green Ninja was, wouldn't he want to actually support whoever that warrior was, and actually train him to one day defeat the Dark Lord? Well, yes and no. It makes sense to me at least why Master Wu would deliberately not bring all of the golden weapons to Moro's test. For one, as mentioned earlier, Moro was an extremely violent and arrogant person towards the end of his training. He eventually got it in his head that he was the best because he knew that Master Wu was training him for greatness, and he took that out negatively on all of his fellow trainees. It is very possible that Master Wu did not want someone with a corrupted heart to be Ninjago's greatest hero. He would rather the Green Ninja be somebody pure of heart, like we eventually saw with Lloyd down the line. Another question would be, how come Moro did not recognize that the Sword of Fire was not present at his test? Well, it makes sense to me that Moro probably would not have known what the Golden Weapons looked like, because I imagine Master Wu would have hid them away somewhere in the monastery, as they are extremely powerful relics and were most likely off limits to trainees, except of course for Moro when it came time for his test. And because of this, Master Wu could have easily swapped out the Sword of Fire with a random golden katana, knowing that Moro could not even tell the difference if he truly wanted to. As such, this trick was easy to pull off by Master Wu. Of course, we know that after Moro's rejection, he was desperately trying to prove Destiny wrong, and ultimately got himself killed in the process, returning to Ninjago later on as a ghost. Master Wu would eventually wait until until another worthy ninja was born, that of course being Lloyd Garmadon, who would then take up the mantle of the Green Ninja, Ninjago's greatest warrior. So that's the theory. Does it make sense? I mean, some of it does, I think. Except for the whole thing with the golden weapons, honestly. The entire situation with the Sword of Fire not being present at Moro's test was in fact confirmed to be a simple animation error by Ninjago staff and some of the higher-ups working on the show. That regular golden katana was supposed to be the real Sword of Fire. So when you're watching that scene, it's best to simply visualize the Sword of Fire being in the place of that golden katana. So the entire theory pretty much falls apart once that is put into place. 
However, I do really like this idea. I like the idea of Master Wu deliberately changing destiny to provide a more favorable outcome. It might have made Season 5's plot more interesting even. Now I like Possession as a season, I think Season 5 Possession is fine the way it is, but if Master Wu was straight up lying to Moro this entire time because he felt like the path of the Green Ninja should be pure and full of hope rather than superiority and anger, that would have made Moro's connection with Wu a lot more raw and emotional. Moro, in a way, was up for revenge during Season 5, trying to prove both Destiny and Master Wu wrong. Moro's motivations would have been more personal and he would have had more of a personal grudge against Wu if it was revealed that Master Wu tricked him and was lying to Moro the whole time. It would be interesting to see how that would have affected the plot of Possession. Would Moro have gone as far as to even kill Master Wu? That much is of course up in the air, but admittedly it would be pretty cool to see. Maybe Master Wu simply sensed that Moro could indeed become the Green Ninja, and as such he deliberately tricked him and changed Destiny in order to make that not so. Maybe he saw a future where Moro went mad with power and decided to use his powers for evil. That much could be the case as well. Something that would never happen with Lloyd Garmadon. It is worth noting though that while Lloyd was indeed introduced as a villain, he was never truly evil. Of course, when Lloyd was first introduced into the Ninjago story, he was very much trying to follow in his father Garmadon's footsteps, but he always had a good heart. That much has been made very clear throughout the Ninjago show. Lloyd was always destined to be the Green Ninja. There's also several other factors that go against this theory being true. For one, elemental powers in Ninjago are usually a result of someone's ancestor having that specific power, and as such, those elements are passed down genetically through the bloodline. That's another reason why Lloyd was chosen to be the Green Ninja. He was simply part of the family of the first Spinjitzu Master, while Moro simply was not. There is, of course, a bunch of evidence going against the idea that Moro was worthy the entire time, and Master Wu simply deceived him in order to make it not so. However, that does not dismiss the fact that I really enjoy this idea, and I felt like it might have made Season 5's story a lot more interesting. For my final thoughts on this subject, I really enjoy this idea. I feel like they could have made this work into the story eventually if they truly wanted to. They could have went back and retconned some things or made some things in Ninjago's lore a little different to make this storyline fit into the series. I have no doubt that they could have done that, as this was still early in Ninjago, you could easily have changed a few things around. However, I am indeed happy with how Ninjago actually came things out here. I'm happy with Lloyd being the Green Ninja, I'm happy with where Ninjago is, and I'm very much content with how Season 5 Possession actually turned out. So with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for checking out today's video. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about this theory. Do you think that Master Wu deliberately lied to Moro and maybe he was worthy this whole time, or do you feel like it's just a simple animation mistake and maybe we shouldn't be discussing this as thoroughly as I might want to? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff and check out the links down below in the description from other forms of social media as always big shout out goes out to my patreon supporters including once again the marvelous jan thank you guys so much for checking out today's video once again my name is tanner fishies and with that i bid you farewell